Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me today on this Tuesday for a tutorial of how to make this adorable little magnetic bookmark. But before we get to that, I want to um, welcome all my new subscribers. Thanks so much for joining me on my artistic and crafty adventures. And I want to thank everyone who keeps coming back for more. I'm so happy to have you join me. And I love getting to know you in the comments and um, both on YouTube and on Instagram. If you are not following me on Instagram, you can find me at Dr. Underscore Christy. I'll put that right here. And basically I post pictures of my craft and art in progress. I post pictures of baking, both the baking that I film and the baking that I don't film. I post pictures of my life. I post pictures of my dog who's adorable. That's basically kind of my social space. So if you want to hang out with me there, um, just, you know, find me Dr. Underscore Christy. This is a channel about embroidery and other textile crafts and baking and history and the history of those things. So if any of that sounds interesting to you and you are not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe and you know join me in my community. So today we're going to make a bookmark like this that we can gift to a friend or a loved one. This is the one, like I said, that I gave to my fiance for Christmas. And the nice thing is that it's easy and it's a thoughtful gift for the reader in your life. And you can use any fabric and any embroidery and any cross stitch that you have. Or if you don't have a cross stitch or an embroidery, you can just make it out of a nice fabric and that's okay too. So I'm going to flip you around and show you, take you to my workstation and we will get started with that. So essentially, if we look at this prototype that I made for Rich, all that this bookmark is, is a or two pieces of fabric essentially sandwiched with two magnets where you want the magnets to be. In this case, I used the linen that I stitched on and cork, but I recognize that not everybody has cork fabric. The reason why I like the cork fabric is because it is thin, it is sturdy, and it's kind of foldable. And so I, kind of, I like that a lot, actually. I like that foldable nature of it. But we're gonna use linen as a backing as well as as a front you could use felt um, or here we have a scrap of flannel and the nice thing about this is that it's a great scrap buster this is all scrap fabric for me that I just kind of have in my scrap bag I keep my scrap fabrics you need magnets and in this case I'm using very very thin magnets these magnets are uh, a millimeter thick and It'll work, it works fine for the cork, it'll work fine for the linen, it, it would work for the flannel, but these magnets are too small for the felt. The felt is just a little bit too thick because these magnets aren't incredibly strong. Most magnets that you buy are not this thin. I like the millimeter wide, the millimeter thick magnets because they are less bulk in the pages, which is why I use them. But you can use two or three millimeter thick magnets that have, uh, and they have, and they're stronger. And so they'll go through more fabrics and more pages. So you need um, your embroidery or your cross stitch. You need a backing fabric. You need scissors. You need two magnets and you need some adhesive. And I actually, this is my second take because I used just Aliens, original tacky glue on this one but I didn't love the discoloration on the back where you could kind of see the glue through it because linen is such a wide weave or a loose weave I, I didn't love it so my first time doing this I used like heat and bond which is a an iron-on glue which is really nice um, because it doesn't show through um, it does discolor the insides there's kind of glue on the inside but the problem is that I think that the heat messes with the magnets. And so I'm redoing this with Eileen's and you can see that there is this kind of glue residue here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And that actually might help to um, keep the glue from seeping through here, which would be nice. And another way you could do this is using a very thin iron-on interfacing in between your stitching and your gluing. So that would work very well. So that's really all you need. You need a front, a back, two magnets, and glue and scissors and we're ready to rock and roll. Basically the first thing you need to do is figure out where you want your magnets to go. Mine are marked off here 
And the way that I marked it off is that I folded it in half, um, essentially where I wanted it to be. I, I think I don't actually like where that's folded. So this is 14, so seven. So if we fold it right there on that line right there, I think that's a pretty nice sized bookmark, right? This one is about a little less than seven, six and a half centimeters, which is about two and three quarters inches. And this one is three and a half centimeters wide or about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And that to me is a nice size. So if we fold this in half, we now have a center point, which I think is good to have. And if we put, let's say we just put that on the three inch line, we can decide that we want our magnets to be kind of right here, which is between a half inch and one inch. So at three quarters of an inch, which means that we want the other magnet right here. And that's kind of how I'm gonna make them even. One thing to remember about magnets is that you have a positive and a negative side. And so the negative side has to match the positive side or else they won't stick. So this needs to go, so you wanna take it like that. So that's they're sticking together and fold it over. So we want them right there. And that should be a nice sized magnet. So first things first, I'm going to put a little dab of glue under this magnet there. So that's gonna go right there. And a little dab of glue under that magnet there. So now we know where the magnets are and they are stuck in place. Well, they will be when it dries. This takes about 35 minutes to dry. Then you wanna take your glue and glue them together. The glue your front piece, the wrong side of your front piece to the wrong side of your back piece. Now for this back piece, it doesn't really matter because it's the same front and back. But if you were using this flannel and you wanted the giraffe, because why wouldn't you, on the outside, you would put it that way, right? Wrong side to wrong side. And I'm just gonna be somewhat liberal with my glue, which is probably why it showed through. Make sure you get it on the outside. And we're gonna trim all this off when it dries because we of course want this to be neat. You wanna make sure you have in the middle. And this is when I kind of go in with my fingers just to smooth it, make sure it's not lumpy because you don't want a lumpy bookmark. I'm sure there are tools for this, but I don't have them because I don't use glue very much. Um, you could also use a hot glue gun if you wanted. But I kind of like the Eileen's. Make sure you get some on the top of the um, magnets as well. Yeah, my dog's coming in. And you then take your piece, your back piece, and stick it on. And now I like putting a book on it because that feels good to me. You want to make sure that you have something in between. So I use, so I use wax paper. I just have a piece of wax paper that I have lying around. So that way when I put my nice book on it, I know I'm not going to get any glue on it. So this is my gift from Rich for Christmas. I'm going to put it on top and let that set for 35 minutes. And when we come back, it should be nice and glued. Okay, so it's been probably about 20 minutes. I've had lunch <laughs> and checked some emails as you do. So we're going to take this off and see how it looks. It's back in my little stitchy library here. And 
I can feel the magnet is still a little bit wet on the magnet. Yeah, it looks like it went through this side a little bit, but that looks pretty good. And what I want to do is make sure, yeah, make sure that it sticks and maybe enfold it a little bit. So that's what I want to do there. Now what we need to do is cut it to size because obviously this is not a bookmark at the moment. And so what I like to do, well, where's my needle? What I like to do is I like to take a needle. So essentially I want this to be in the center and I take the highest point and I count, I don't know, let's say five, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. <laughs> so that's where we want to go, right? And we can put, and it doesn't have to be perfect. But we can put a little needle a pin in that stick a pin in it our magnets are working so that's good so that was right there and then from this side one two three four five six it's right there ish and this doesn't have to be exact. I mean, it is just a bookmark. Um, and then essentially you want to cut and for linen. And if you are a cross stitcher for your even weave or your Ada, this is really easy because you can just follow the grain. And in fact, Ada would be really nice for this because it like new Ada is so st stiff that it will be a nice, uh, sort of a nice form for this. So I'm just going to do the best I can eyeballing this and it's not going to be perfect and I'm not going to worry about it being perfect because I'm not really that bothered <laughs> as long as it generally looks even. when you cut it to size. Okay, so how does that look? Not so even, so then I'm gonna just kind of clean it up because you want it to look even in itself. Right. That was pretty good. So now we have it the, the width that we want, and this ended up being almost an inch and a half, so slightly wider, but that's okay. Um, I think this manicule is slightly wider, but it's starting to look more like a bookmark, and you can see that it sticks together, which is good. And then you just wanna figure out how long you want it. And I'm gonna cut it to here because I do like that cutting off of the corners and so i want to make sure i don't cut off any of the manicule when i cut off the corner and again i want it visually the same and so at this point you have a bookmark <laughs> you could you know it sticks to a book and the thing I like about the manicules, well, first of all, the point of a manicule was in a book to, or a manuscript to like point to important parts. So now you actually have a man, a manicule, like a finger that's pointing in your book to important parts. So you could keep it like this. I think it doesn't look as finished when it's like this. And so I like having, in this case, like I said, a blanket stitch, you could do a whip stitch around the outside, but I think I'm just going to do a running stitch all the way around and see how that looks. So I'm going to pause you and do that. So there we have it. This is the one I just did. And if you, as you can see, the running stitch, even just a simple running stitch, just really kind of finishes it off. And it's also nice because, you know, this end wasn't glued down quite as well. And so having that running stitch really helps it out, but helps your confidence that it's going to stay together and it will stick together. No problem. And this is, you know, P 
pages folded in half and it sticks no problem. I do prefer, I have to be honest with you, I really like this cork on the back because this is a little floppier than I like. I like it stiffer. So that's how I made this bookmark. And the nice thing is you can do this with any kind of embroidery or cross stitch that you have and it will work great and be just kind of a thoughtful gift. So I'm gonna flip you around and um, take you back to my corner. So there you have it. So now we have two bookmarks. One of them is bigger than the other and, you know, <laughs> a little wonky, but I really love how these turned out. And I think that if you have a book lover in your life, this is kind of just a really nice gift. Like I said, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore Christy. And I don't know, I don't really have much else to say. So I'm going to let it go at that. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful week and new year. Uh, it is currently December 29th. My birthday was yesterday, actually. And yeah, let's ring in the new year with books and stitching and new bookmarks. So with all that being said, please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.